Hello everyone from the vegan and plant powered show to my kitchen in Australia. I am Simon Tui and I am honored to be able to give you a little masterclass on this dish and you will have it in front of you if you're watching and I hope you do so cook along with me. I won't go too fast I promise. And then on the side, once this dish goes in the oven, I won't tell you too much about it just yet. I have a cocktail and I have some uh, Calvados and some Pedro Jimenez and some uh, amazing little Chinese pears. I'll tell you about those later. That's gonna be an amazing cocktail. And then I got a fermentation session to go with you. So it's a triple whammy, not a single, triple. A beautiful dish you're gonna cook. Then you're gonna make cocktail while you're waiting. Then while you're waiting still, you get to ferment some onions, pull the dinner out, ready to eat. So, Without further ado, I am going to be making a hot pot using these beautiful rice and some eggplant, some, some browned leeks, which I love, olives, heaps of herbs and some carrots and some spices. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's all going to be one pot wonder. Super, super simple. Just a bit of time and love is all you need. And when it comes to food, it's exactly what we have. On the back behind me here, I'm just going to put a pan on, medium heat, bit of oil in, okay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of the times people forget that when it comes to flavour, vegetables seem to miss out. A lot of steaming, a lot of boiling, a lot of uh, overcooking. This, vegetables have exactly the same ability to create flavor like meat does when you add color. And leeks are a classic example of that. And what I'm gonna do is put the leeks cut side down. I've taken the tops off. These are great to uh, use in stocks down the line, so don't throw them out. You can also char them and then, and then dry them and then make them into oils, really beautiful. But I've taken them, the, the greens off, and then I've cut them straight down the middle. And the leeks are, you know, and known for their soily bits inside. Yeah, coming close. So in here's all the leeks. So when you wash it, make sure you always keep the cut side facing down towards the sink and you wash it down through here so it doesn't push the dirt back up into the stalk and get st stuck. So I've just washed these, pretty simple. Nothing scientific about it. But what I wanna do is I wanna get the cut part. So the fresh, newly exposed um, sweetness from the leek and I'm gonna put that on the oil and the pan that we've just heated up. And I'm gonna get some color in that and that's gonna drive flavor through the rest of the dish. Come on in. Don't think it's gonna be hot enough now, that's okay. Oh, a little bit, a little bit of sizzle. A little light on, ready? Oh. The difficulty sometimes of uh, cooking at home is light, I think. But if you take a little squid to your right, look at this little French onion soup that a friend of mine and I have been making for a long, long time. Ooh wee! Delicious, plant-based as well, onions. I mean, look, it's a bit of a theme going on. So I'm gonna let those sit for a bit. You can put a weight on there, which is pretty cool. That always works, just helps to, to sort of, oh my gosh, I'm really struggling here. It helps just keep them flat. So a little weight on, speed up the process. Clean up as we go along. Look at this, look at this. Oh, olive bread, olive, olive sourdough. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Speaking of olives, another flavor bomb when it comes to plant-based eating. Olives, Kalamata olives. I just got these pitted and they're gonna go in to add that salt hit that I want. So, I've got some, you know, maybe 50 grams-ish. You could weigh it, no, about 50 grams. And this really is up to you because you can have as much or as little as you want. If you're an olive lover, then, you know, put more in. But if you don't like olives, which I know some friends of mine don't, um, then leave them out entirely. Maybe put capers in. That's a really good option. Capers is a really good substitute. Or preserved lemon would be really cool. I love that. Hmm. Yeah. They're good ones. So I've got those chopped up. They're really roughly chopped. Um, I'm just going to reiterate the fact that this is a super, super simple dish. So the people that you cook have obviously dropped off the meal kit to you. Hopefully everything is there and ready to go. Um, and you're just following along. I've got my carrots here. Now I've just got little Dutch carrots and I've taken the tops off, but you can use just a regular carrot. I really want you to understand that this dish is really uh, 
create your own journey by you, not necessarily by me. I've given you the book, and now you just have to fill in the words and the pages with you, know, you just have to fill in the pages with words. Um, but keep it simple, because when you come home from work, the last thing you want to do is slave over, a, you know, slave over the over the stove for a long period of time trying to cook for four, five, two even people. This allows you to get all the prep done. Dump it into this, a pot. You can do it into a regular stove. Like you can start a regular stove, silly sign, easy words right. You can do it, you know, in one of these, if you like, just a regular pot. A lid is preferable. Um, that's great. But I've got this. This is my grandmother's, like my grandmother's old Royal Dalton. Dalton? Made in Australia. Oven to table, it says. How's that for marketing? Right. Carrots done, it's just a beautiful little bit of texture. Our eggplant, top off, hang out there. Now the thing I love about eggplant, I think, because this crop, I mean this is a huge eggplant. Look at the size of that. So I'm just gonna go half. You can go whole, obviously the more the merrier. Very kind of a look. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get a little spatula. Let's have a look and see how they're going. Ooh, a little bit of colour. Oh, that's looking good. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it afterwards as well. What we're going to do afterwards is the fun part. All right, back it up. So, keep clean, Simon, keep clean. I will put the fan on, but I think it might deafen all this. The slices in the cubes. The thing I love about eggplant is its ability to soak in so much flavour. If you get two bigger pieces, again, roughly chops. That's probably a little bit too big because we're not frying it, so it's not really going to set a shrink. What we are going to be doing is we're going to be soaking it in a lot of liquid in here, so it's going to draw in all this flavor, um, and it won't get smaller. So we're going to get them a little bit more into the bite-size sort of realm. Again, classic me. Chill out. Don't have to make it perfect. I'm giving you permission to be creative here. Dill, parsley, as much or as little as you like again, but I'm gonna take, there we go, a few stalks, right? This is gonna go in at the start, and then, ooh. <laughs> this is gonna go in at the start, and then we're gonna put a little bit more at the end as well. And come over and have a look at these leeks. I reckon they're done. Squeeze, yes, look at that. That is beautiful. Take these off the heat. I'll bring these back over with me. They're looking really good. Yes. So what this color, this, what we call the Maillard reaction, which is fatty acids mixing with sugars. What this does is create that roasty, toasty flavor. So, you know, caramelized onions, for example, is what that flavor comes from. The other one you get the flavor from would be like toast. Toast is that wonderful classic world of Maillard, which is that toasty flavor which you get. This is what that is, and that's just gonna impart flavor into the rest of this dish. So if you've taken those leeks off, and if you haven't yet, that's okay. Make sure you try and get this color. You wanna get it as close to this as possible, a little darker, perfectly fine. This one could probably go a little bit longer if you so wish but I'm okay with where we're at. Back to my dill, just quickly. Don't freak out. If you're cooking along right now, you're like, oh, it's going too fast. I'm sorry, I'll slow down. <laughs> just slow down for you. But all we're doing is taking our leeks, and I've made this dish so many times, so I kind of, it's just, it's just muscle memory now. And also I just make, a lot of it I just kind of make up as I go along. But I've ch chopped up a nice palm full of dill. That's gonna hang out here. On my board. Right, then come across parsley, grab. And the thing that people forget is park, park these stalks. Park, parsley stalks are absolutely amazingly delicious and totally edible. So same thing with the parsley. I reckon I've got a good handful of parsley there. Look at that, there we go. 
Then, finally, my stock. I just use a stock cube because I always have, I have, what do I call it? I just call it emergency stock. I mean, I have a lot of stuff in my freezers full of onion skins and garlic skins and uh, fennel bulbs, you know, that are going, or vegetables that are going a bit south, maybe sort of like a couple of carrots that aren't so good. And then I make stock, but sometimes I don't have stock. So I have what I call emergency stock, which is stock cubes. And they're, they're great, they're absolutely fine. I, I don't have a problem with them at all. I think people really should just go with what they're used to. And I needed stock today, and here we go, I've got it. It's, it's, it's utterly perfect. And I've got 400 mils there, and I've got 250 grams of rice. Or I've got, two, sorry, I've got a cup of rice. And I got, because I'm being a bit bougie today, a bit of saffron. I love saffron, really, really nice. Okay. So jump with me, let's have a look. It's a, it's a fly here. Come in close. Let's have a little checklist of what we've got. Let's clean up a bit here, a bit of a mess. Apologies, apologies. Let's have a look here. We've got coriander seeds and cumin seeds there, teaspoon of each. I've got a palm full of dill, more or less up to you. All of this is more or less up to you. Again, same with parsley. Over here, I've got my eggplant, easy peasy. Carrots, my baked leeks, my beautiful Kalamata olives. Yum, 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 yum. Stock. Saffron. Now, while you're probably maybe catching up on your end, let's talk about substitutes because it's important to know that people don't have to like everything and it's okay. So we talked about those olives you can substitute. Leeks, you could use regular onions and you can do exactly the same process if you want. Uh, you don't have to put leeks in there at all. You can put something else entirely. Uh, what else can we do other than leeks? Spring onions, garlics, uh, I have to look through the thing. You can do fennel, thin slices of fennel. Oh, delicious, great. You could use that instead. So there's heaps of options you can do here. Eggplant, again, you don't have to do that. You can use mushrooms. Awesome little one to substitute with. Um, and you can even go down the root veg style and stick with the carrots. You could do maybe celeriac. Uh, you could do turnips or sweet. I've done this with radishes before. Really, really cool. Love it with radishes. So definitely, definitely available to try. Okay. Back in, coming close. This is the fun part. I'm gonna create it now. Sounds like we're going, well, we're pretty much done when it comes to the creativity of it all. We've cooked just this so far. And I'm gonna throw in, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna measure this. I think it's, I don't really measure it when I'm making it myself, but I'm gonna measure it. Okay, we we'll need full as a cup there, give or take. Rice at the bottom. Pretty simple. Awesome. Now for the fun part. So we get creative. Leeks. I've just chopped the tail off. These are actually really good. I love eating the bottoms of the leek. If you actually put that in a hot pot, and I'll put one in there, I'll show it to you later on. It turns into this T beautiful, chewy deliciousness. And as long as there's no oil in, um, no dirt in there, happy days. All right. Layering time. So all we're doing is creating layers of flavor through that amazing cooking you did from those leeks. Here we go. Placing them in here. And these as they steam with the stock in the oven, they will impart a lot of flavor into that rice. <gasps> Not only that, the flavor into your eggplants. Flavor into your carrots. The flavor of the beautiful olives as well. And that's just one layer, right? Let's go round two. Cut the bottom off. Come back to me here. Layers, kind of making this sort of like leek style lasagna really, aren't we, in some ways, without the, without the mince. But look how shiny that is. I mean, I just love it. It's when food excites you is when it, you know it's gonna taste good. Put this upside down. 
Great. And then let's go. More carrots. Top. I'm just being a little bit creative here. You can just dunk, dunk it all in if you'd like, but when it comes to the table and you have this sort of jewel reveal, I think that's really cool. Great. More olives. So I've just used one leek there, which is all you need. But if you have a bigger pot, use it all or chop these up and throw them in as well. Last bit. And then finally, our herbs. Not finally, because we've got the, the spices to go in as well. Herbs. <laughs> Look at that. Maybe we just eat it raw. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> Spices in. Cool. Cheeky bit of saffron. I'm gonna put that in the stock. I probably should have done that at the start. But if you have hot water, sorry, right, this will still work because it will definitely, definitely, definitely heat up. And stock. All around the top. Beautiful. And I think we're pretty good. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there. Oh, there we go, there we go, in that corner. See that? Can you see that all right? Beautiful. So that stock is holding on tight. And don't forget, it might you might think there might not be enough stock in there. The vegetables are full of liquid. Oh, seasoning. Ha! Imagine. Salt. Don't forget your salt. Season, season. Beautiful. This is a Celtic salt, so it's quite strong. Don't want too much. Uh, as it cooks, you know, the eggplant releases liquid, the carrots release their liquid, the, the leeks will release their liquid as well, and then it's just going to become this beautiful amalgamation of flavour. Lid on. And everyone out there who's watching and cooking along, that is it. I have the oven at 180 degrees and I'm gonna put it in there for 30 minutes. Check on it then, see how it's going. If there's a little bit of soup left at the bottom, a little bit of stock left at the bottom where the rice is cooked, perfect. If there's all soup gone and the rice is cooked, perfect. If the rice is still a little bit hard, then either add a little bit more water if you've run out or keep cooking it. But 30 minutes lit off, sorry, 30 minutes lit on, 10 minutes lit off, all done. See you in about 40 minutes. see everything's cleaned down and we're moving into the fun part the precursor to dinner which is that little cocktail that I love this one is all about celebrating Calvados you can use brandy okay you know what let's start don't don't stop stop recording but let's just start at the start I'm gonna be making a Calvados cocktail stirred down with a bit of pink pepper uh, some heat some warmth some floral flavors really really cool and then finishing off with these beautiful things called fragrant pears from, uh, they're from the deserts of, of China. Uh, so do, be sure to make this cocktail with these. No, use regular pears, absolutely fine. Cloudy apple juice, fine. Uh, Nashi pears, also fine. But I've got my hands on some of these and these are delicious. So, and it's very rare that you can get your hands on these. So good timing. Um, and it's gonna be a stirred down cocktail. Stirred downs, I love them. But people say sort of have those stirred down cocktails after dinner but I'm, I'm the reverse i like them before i like that sort of like warmth and i think that gets my you know s my saliva glands bursting and ready for you know course number one of of course 20 course degustation but um we're gonna make this one it's beautiful calvados calvados is an apple brandy it uses apple for fermentation then distilled uh you don't have to use calvados you should be able to get it in most bottle shops now but if you can't um 
Uh, you can find apple brandy because obviously it, it depends on where you are. But regular brandy is fine. You can use rum. You can use whiskey. Yeah, it's all okay. But something dark and aged is where you want to go with this. But Calvados for this perfect this cocktail, I think is fantastic. Um, what else we got? Oh God, Pedro Jimenez. Now this is an Australian Pedro Jimenez. Really cool. So it uses the Pedro Jimenez grape. Um, usually from Spain is where we probably pretty much always know most of our Pedro Jimenez to come from, or most of our sherries. Uh, and it's not. It's not that sherry that, uh, I don't know if you have that in South Africa, but in Australia we have uh, the Bristol Cream. It's just, it's like the, no offense, but it's the grandparents' sherry. It's the thing that's just so sweet and awful. This is nothing like it. This has got care and love and like the grapes are held for a long time and so they have a really high sugar content. Then it's aged beautifully um, and I could go on for ages about it, but it's awesome. If you can't find Pedro Jimenez, most bottle shops should have it, but if you can't find it, uh, like a sweet wine, um, maybe a port, uh, a musket, uh, something like that. You know, like fortified wine. Fortified. Have a look into that. Uh, you could even use, you know what, just to continuously ramble, you could even use like a, a, a sweet vermouth. And they're definitely readily available everywhere. So you can, you can jump on that. Um, pink pepper. This is pink pepper syrup. There is two, there's a tablespoon of pink peppercorns to, um, uh, 30 grams of sugar, 30 mils of water, hot water, stirred until it dissolves and the flavour is there. Brilliant. And then finally, the apples, oh sorry, the pears. And I'm going to get into making it. It's pretty, pretty easy. Oh, this is one more thing. One more thing. I can't stand these containers. They drive me up the wall. But what they are good for uh, is, I don't buy those little ice thingies and put them in the freezer. I fill these up and they stack. So I can stack like six high and put them in my freezer and I get a block Block ice. When, I don't know if you've ever been to a cocktail bar until that or it's sell these big block ices. Well, black ices? Block ice? Block ices? Anyway, they serve these block ice, well, you can do it at home. And it's simple. And then you get a bread knife, coming close. Coming real close. I don't itchy nose, I'm sorry. The itchy nose, I'm working hands. Oh, hay fever. Hay fever, right. So watch. Just, some people probably hate this sound. My, my mother definitely hates this sound. Bosh! Look at that! Perfect! How good is that? And so, slower dilution, because there's more of it. Uh, and you can make it, obviously, it'll have these circular ones, you can get them square or rectangular, whatever you want. So, big cubes of ice. Wicked! Right, so into our glass with these. Great. We can do... Yeah. Let's make it, let's make it, let's make it glut now. Look at that. Bam! big cubes of ice. And the best thing about this, if you're like me, you actually, the, the, this ice won't dilute. So all you have to do is, you know, top up maybe with one more, one more cube next time, but they'll last for, for ages and ages and ages. Uh, here we go, Calvados. I want 40 mils. No, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 30 mils. 30 mils of Calvados. Awesome. Now this cocktail comes off the back of a treacle. Um, which is kind of like a twist, again, on an old-fashioned. Um, you know, stirred down whiskey drink. But a treacle, tops it with apple juice. Maybe you use rum, I think, from memory. But we're sort of running off that, that mindset of something that's really dark and heavy, topping with something sort of really light and refreshing. In fact, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not really that sorry. We're going to go 40 mils. So an extra 10 mils each. We've got a big enough glass here, I think. Yeah, I think we do. Then we're gonna go a bar spoon or a teaspoon, five mils ish, of your syrup. Three to five mils is usually a bar spoon or a, a teaspoon, depending on which one you use. And then finally, 15 mils of your Pedro Jimenez. Super Christmassy, raisins, chocolate, um, sort of like oaky woodiness, uh, leather, that sort of that meant that sort of style. And I don't know if you heard that little knock down in the background. It's my little puppy mental just falling over. <laughs> yep, done in each. Cool. So if you think about this now, you can see you've got warmth from like an apple distillate, like like Calvados. You've got spice notes from pink pepper, and then sweet spice notes from 
your Pedro Jimenez. Really, really cool at the moment. One great thing about cocktails that people really need to think about and forget about is dilution. Dilution is super, super important when it comes to cocktails. If you just start having raw spirit, it just, you know, when it comes to like mixing drinks, it's just, it's not great. It's not great at all. Okay, now coming really close here, I wanna show you something. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this because there's murmurs of the oven with our little uh, hot pot going on in there, but listen to the, listen to this. Listen to this, right? That is crunch. Oh, wait, wait, stay there, stay there, ready? It is pure juice. Oh! Fragrant, pre fragrant pear, game changer. Um, but any regular pear, fine. I'm just lucky I've got to hold these. Right. Is it on? It's on. We're juicing it. We are. Pears in. Oh my god, I've done already. I'll sit down. <laughs> Pears in. I want 30 mils. Look how much juice is coming out of that. That's crazy. It is pure juice. Even the pulp is juice. <laughs> so 30 mils per baby. And now, as you can see, I'm making two. It's not, they're not, they're not both for me. Someone, uh, someone has to hold the camera. <laughs> I've got to pay their wage, you know? I've got to pay their wage. Uh, I think um, when the when the vegan plant powered festival team sort of asked me to make a cocktail, I jumped at it because there's nothing like a good afternoon cocktail. All right, I reckon that's enough. Off. There's a little switcheroo. Juice is there. Finish my pair off. You know what? Save the seeds, dry them, put them in the fridge, and see if you can grow your own. Mmm, you can grow your own. I mean, I don't know if our climate's really gonna help it. But these pears grow in desert, like really flat lands, and they get glacial water from Tibet, and they feed that glacial water to water these, these plants, uh, to water the, the trees. Uh, and you can't actually walk on the soil because you'll sink. And then for two months of the year, I think they, they dry out entirely so they can go and harvest all the pears. <whistles> Mind way. I mean, the, the things that people do. Right. A little stir again. Clean up your station. Taste. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Now, before this goes brown, because that's what, you know, has that possibility. Just to finish it, the classic thing I'm going to try and do. See if we can do it. I haven't done this for a long time. I'm going to make an apple or a pear fan. I learned this in London. This will impress the judges. Okay, take off the edges. Here we go. Take off the, the smallest. There we go. Then, just keep going. Hold it somewhat similar to the middle. Just keep going, keep going. Oh, I think I've over pushed this. Yeah, I've definitely have done it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so if you get it right, if you do it with apples, because you've got a bigger surface area, then, no! <laughs> I got too cocky and I stuffed it up. I'm sorry. But there you go. We can do a little apple fan here. Oh my God, can I be rude? Can I just try one more time? Here we go, ready? Let's try one more time. See, if you're playing catch up, this is a good time to, you know, play that catch up game because, Let's see if we can do this one more time. The sharp ends at the top. Spin, 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 spin. There we go, you won't go all the way. That's perfect. Get rid of you. Okay, here we go. Find the ice. Oh, they're not got enough sugar. It's not got enough, uh, 
It's gonna, not going to stick to it. All right, well, we're going to have to go for the old school style and just rest it in. It's got a bit of a blemish. That's okay. No waste. And here we go. This, to me, is delicious. This is a little simple sort of sipper pre-dinner. Or post-dinner, or all night. But Calvados, Pedro Jimenez, pink peppercorns, beautiful pears, amazing, little juice on top, refreshing, light, slightly spicy, and definitely Christmassy. Get into this, and now I'm gonna show you how to ferment some amazing onions. So as you can see, everything has been completely packed down. We're down to our final little section, which is our fermented onions. And I had to do most of it to start with before we started saying yes to the camera because I am tearing up. These are some spicy onions. Uh, and all, I'm, all I've got is I have, I have, I've got one red onion and two brown onions. And I'm just going to finish it off. All I'm doing is simple as taking the skins off and then cutting them into, you know, or half, what are they, new moons, I guess they call them, aren't they? New moons, something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it this way either. You can actually do it, you know, into cubes if you really could be bothered going to that effort. But, did I just say effort like it's a, that was a South African accent. Was it? Or was it just completely wrong and I just couldn't say the word right? Probably more likely that. Anyway, I'm just trying to, you know. Okay, so I finished crying and I finished chopping these onions and it's pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is use the weight of the onions to balance out the weight of the salt that's gonna help me ferment because salt creates fermentation. There's two different types. There's one using sugar and there's one using salt. Salt will create a lactic acid ferment uh, and it's also a, an aerobic ferment as well. So it needs, oh sorry, it's an anaerobic. So it doesn't need air, so it should release without getting any oxygen. Um, all technical, not important at the moment, but I'm gonna show you too. Unless you're going into like great, great detail of ferment history and all that, uh, you don't necessarily need to know. What you do need to know is the percentage of salt, and I'll go no less than 2.5% salt to the weight of your ingredients. So I have, 550 gram. Oh my god, I really put myself in a pickle here. I got 550 grams of onions. If 1% is 5 grams, 5.5 grams, 2% is 10, 11 grams? 11, so let's just go. Camera person, do you know the 3%? I want 3%. Salt to 550 grams. You can say it out loud, don't worry. They, you know, I've given up now. I like 10, 15. About 15 grams, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, 5, 10, 15 grams. Yes, okay, 15 grams. So we're going to go 3% as if it's 500, not 550. And I'm sorry if you're over there yelling at the screen telling me that, you know, what the, what the, the actual range is. I just am not very good with maths. Um, and so we're going to do 15 grams of salt. <laughs> I'm sorry I said. Right, okay, 15 grams of salt. Nine, 13, 14, 16. It's okay, it's all right. You'll be all right. Sprinkle over. Now I do want to flavor my onions. I want to, I want to make them in, uh, I love sumac. It's got a beautiful acidity to it. Oh absolutely gorgeous and if you get a hold of the sumac this is beautiful and I'm just going to add maybe two tablespoons of sumac it is relatively strong uh, but it's going to cover dessert spoon there we go it's better there we go and it's as simple as mixing this around getting all the salt hit all the edges and I'm going to use my hands because it's the best way to get all that and what you're trying to do is the salt is going to break down the cells of the onion and it's gonna start releasing all that liquid that onion has. Um, what is really important when it comes to fermentation, there's a few things. One, that your salt ratio is right, and so you really should be looking at 2.5 as a minimum, give or take, you know, it, this is for people who just want to try fermenting for the first time. Oh my Lord, that is so spicy. And if you have some ski goggles, 
wear those. Uh, the other one as well is it's really important to make sure that the top of your ferment is covered in liquid unless you're using a high percentage. So this is another little rule of thumb. Aiming for the top of it to get covered in liquid. Now, what's gonna happen here, here, can you hear that? It's not a great sound. You can hear the liquid already sort of leaching out from those onions. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's all I really want. It's all I want because I know, I know that this is gonna slowly rise up the liquid is slowly going to get more and more as the onions leach out their juices. So into my jar, and I just realized I've made way more than I need to. Got these Kilner jars, they're the best, right? I love, because they're really well reinforced um, and they come with these little weights. These weights are great. So what that does is help push out that liquid that you're after without going too crazy. So I'm going to push it down, not too tight, because you do want the fermentation to, you know, to happen. A little weight on top. So as you can see, the liquid hasn't come to the top yet. Like I'm very well aware that that is not, it's pretty close though. Come down a little lower. Can you come down a little lower? Can you see where that liquid sort of, that liquid line? Come, you know, I reckon an hour, the onions will be covered in liquid. Now, if it doesn't, just add a drop of distilled water or filtered water. You can, if you've got really good clean water, if you're you know, in a place that doesn't have too much chemicals in your water, use regular tap water. Uh, and if you don't have one of these weights, like a very well clean stone, you know, from the beach or from somewhere around is really perfectly fine. But another one would be like, you can get the stalks of a, of a broccoli, cut the stalk off a little bit and push it down. That can be like the pressure. So this lid goes on. Now I'm going to finish off the rest of these onions in another jar because I've made enough for me and enough to pay my camera person. So, you know, one for you, one for me. Dry my hands. And that's it. That is actually it. That, to me, fermented pickled onions, or fermented onions, um, salt fermented onions with sumac. Now this, leave out, it's summer. So you need to do this, coming close again one more time. You need to do this every single day, lift it up, yep, and then close. Because what happens is the gas Fermentation gas gets caught inside that jar and it needs to get released. If you don't release it, pressure builds up. This is where things can go wrong. It will, or possibly, will explode if it doesn't have the ability to release that gas. Uh, so you just want to do it every single day. And sometimes, if you're in a place which is really, really hot, twice a day. It's quite important. I mean, it's summer now, it's 30 degrees here uh, in Melbourne. Who would have thought that could ever get that warm? But <laughs> so I do it twice a day, and I'll have I'll show you. Just stay there. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna I'll come back into oh holy gosh, I'll come back into frame. Here's some things I've done as well. So here, these are garlic scapes. So as you can see, you know, the liquid there, I actually added water, so it would cover, it would cover the top. And that's gone super sour, like nice and sour, lacto fermenti. And this is some soured corn that I've done. And this is the same process. If you think about the liquid content of, of corn, I mean, it's hugely juicy and full of sugars. So I did a dry salt, like exactly the same thing. And it didn't have any liquid. And now the liquid is perfectly formed at the top. So that's what you gotta look forward to. And it's really delicious. And I've used these onions on, uh, on burgers, on sandwiches, um, in salad, I mean, everything. Because come a week, and that's a week, right? About a week, keep tasting it because you'll start to taste this nice sort of vinegary sourness coming about. That's what you're aiming for. So in about a week's time is exactly when you should be putting that, probably in the fridge, and that'll last for a really, really long time in the fridge. I mean, I, I reckon we'll probably eat those in a week easily. Like, and they're just so delicious. But I reckon you should hold tight because the 10 minutes is up with the lid being off my bait. All the time, all the time. Yes, it is. Oh. Wait, I need something to stop the uh, 
stop the burning. So it's hot. Okay, right, hold tight. Alright, here we go. Hmm. Look at this. Look at this. This is a plate of beauty in my mind. so very much. I'm going to get my dill. I'm going to get some more olive oil. I'm going to finish this off with my spoon. Where is it? There we go. Stay there. There we go. Look at that. It's all come together beautifully. The carrots are beautiful. Still, still got a bit of crunch to them. Oh. Mm. Mm. Right. Look at that rice. Me in the light. Look at that rice. Look at that rice. Holy! Okay, dig in. Dig in. Oh my gosh, look at the colors. So that flavor from the leeks, from the olives, and everything is sunk into that. All I'm doing is getting a beautiful plate of these delicious vegetables and leeks, and it's really hearty, salty, it's sweet. Pops of different flavors all around. I think it's decadent. I love things like this. Simple. I mean, how many vegetables are in there? Taste that rainbow is what I'm all after. I'm just gonna chop up some more herbs. I've got a bit more parsley there. A little bit more dill. Give that a fine, fine shot. I'll go in a second. Finish with olive oil. Don't be shy. Olive oil is a beautiful fat. It's very good for you. And if I can't have that for lunch or dinner, and not be happy with that, then there's something wrong with me. But I know this is delicious because I have that. I reckon I have this a couple of times a month. It's just beautiful. And then now look how much I've got left over. And you can feed easily four people out of that. Just gorgeous. So everyone at the plant bowden, oh, let me get my hair, it's all turned, it's so warm. And because we're in lockdown, I can't get a haircut. And it's all a bit peaked on, uh, gone wrong. It's a bit of cockney uh, rhyming slang. Uh, thank you everyone from the vegan and plant-powered show. You're just amazing. Everyone in South Africa, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for all your support through MasterChef. And thank you to all the sponsors. You cooked for supplying all the food. You are fantastic. Please keep doing amazing things. And I hope to see you over there for the round two of this festival next year. My name is Simon Tui. This is my one pot hot pot my cocktail which you've had, and my beautiful, where are they? Sumac fermented onions. Love you everyone.